from wherever you're watching us from, good afternoon, good evening, and oh, good morning. We have started 2020. Of course, we are expecting a lot from the Republic of Uganda to happen this year. As we're closing 2019, of course, we remember at least the three key main addresses that were given by President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, Dr. Kiza Vesije, and Honorable Robert Chagrani. They were all addressing the same people that I aim at leading probably after 2021 general election. Now, there's so many stories that developed over, out of the discussions and the presentations that were made by these individuals. And of course, today, some of those stories are the ones that we're going to be breaking down. But as the year started, we remember that now People Power is also, is also going to launch their nationwide consultations. Just as what happened today, President Seven was in, uh, in the villages trying to continue with his promise of the trek, remembering all war heroes that fought with him during uh, the struggle or the liberation of the country. Dr. Vesij still stands on his ground by saying he will not leave the struggle until the struggle is over. So today I'm joined by a team of well-informed Ugandans who live here in the United States, basically in the diaspora, if I may generalize it that way, who have tried to take their time to figure out what exactly is happening in the country. Now, I'm in, in the studio with uh, Badru uh, Jami, commonly known on social media, JK. Uh, I'm sure you've seen him on different uh, social media platforms, but he's also very formidable and informed. Sarah Joy Bakanasa, Richard Mjambia, and Imran Kasuja, a law student at Harvard University. So guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me today uh, in the studio. Uh, the year has started, we are already in 2020, and so many things that have already started happening in, in Uganda. We normally focus here on Ghana Crossroads, so I'm happy that you guys have joined me. Now, I'm going to go one by one, just to let me know how your year is so far. We are just a number of days uh, away from 2019 into 2020. So uh, let me start to actually today. I'm going to surprise everybody. Let me start with Imran. Imran, thank you for joining me today again. Uh, at you. least you were here for 2020. At least this is our first show. How was your new, how is your new year so far and how was your 2019 towards the end? Um, my new year is apparently not bad. Um, politically, um, we see the events that are unfolding in Uganda. It's, um, it's, they are going to be political tensions. Of course, it's expected. Um, it's a political year because elections happen in 2021, um, February. So the politics is happening this year. Um, and of course, I cannot fail to talk about um, the pending World War III um, that might happen between Ira um, Iran and USA. Um, so we are following the stories, and um, I'll be glad to share my views on those stories. All right, thank you so much. I will go straight to Richard. Uh, Richard, did you enjoy your New Year's Eve and, of course, the New Year? Yeah, I enjoyed my New Year's, but it, I had a very interesting story that I was watching of uh, the reconciliation between Hiroi Kaguta Museveni and Amman Babas. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if we see the way the life of Mr. President and everything that he's doing and everything that is on the, on, on the wall, it seems that he, in, in January, the, uh, the, the, the NRM uh, uh, meeting that is going to be in, in Nambol, I think they might bring Amman Babas to replace Museveni as the head of the government. <laughs> 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 right. That's what's very interesting to me. All right, thank you. <laughs> so, Aaron, right, let me go straight to you. Uh, <laughs> your new year so far, anything interesting or same story, same old, same everything? Definitely. This is 2020. You can't be, you can't be thinking about, you know, whatever happened. Personally, 2019, I can't be thinking about, that's an old decade. This is a new decade. Uh, politically, basically, you can't... Uh, you can't just throw away 2019. 2019 has given birth to 2020, of which uh, so much is developing and so much is happening. So we're excited and uh, ready to see what happens this year. All right, so the momentum is high, and um, people are ready for change more than ever. All right, good. people are ready for change more than ever. Uh, Badru, uh, first of all, before you come in, uh, yesterday I saw you uh, so much campaigning for the release of... Uh, one of, you know, famous uh, kind of politician in Uganda, uh, Mohamed Seglinya. Uh, let me start from there. Is that how you wanted to start your new year, 2020? Um, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for your invitation. Um, 2020, it's a year of determination. 
2020 is a year that Ugandans are going to be deciding who the next president is going to be by 2021. Because the political trend that, uh, that is going to be unveiling this year, it's, uh, it's, uh, this is the year that we're going to make, this is the year that we're going to make everything possible. Either we front uh, the right candidate that we want to be the president of the Republic of Uganda, or we should be deciding exactly what to do this year. Uh, going back to the Honorable that was arrested at the airport, Honorable Segirinya, we, we managed to put up a big fight, and uh, he's now a free person, but he was, he was beaten up. <coughs> as, as you know, the dictator, how the, the dictator operates, the gentleman was beaten up, and uh, he's recovering, but so far the tension is too high in 2020, and we should expect that the revolution and everything that we are planning to do is happening in 2020. This is the year of decision that Honorable Chagulani should be realized as the sole candidate to compete with Mr. Seven. All right, sounds good. You've, you've, you've opened up my discussion so well. Uh, I really wanted to start with Honorable Chagulani's uh, candidature as a personal, probably as the only single candidate representing the opposition. Uh, but I'm going to go there. Let me start with what Richard came up with. Uh, recently, when the year was ending, we saw President Seven meeting um, John Patrick Mamababa as the former premier of Uganda. Did that tell you guys, especially, sorry, you're a very strong people power supporter. When you see one who was considered one of the actors of the government of President Museveni coming back tonight with him, what does that tell you? Um, I, basically nothing. I'd, I'm one person who has never taken Babazi seriously. Even um, in the previous election, it is very clear Babazi was, was uh, set up by President Museveni to divide the opposition vote. And I feel bad for all the opposition leaders that went running. First of all, I think some people ran to Babazi because they thought maybe he had money. So some people ran over there because they thought they were going to get money. But Mbawazi was a setup for Museveni to divide the opposition vote. And uh, even Mbawazi reuniting with Museveni because how much did he get the other time? How many votes did he get the other time? So Mbawazi does not even bother me. Mbabazi, I'm not, Mbabazi Museveni can reunite with Mbabazi, he can get uh, Moses Ali, he can get all the opposition, he can get all the movement lot to move with him, Ugandans are ready for change. So Mbabazi doesn't really bother me. Him are coming up, because even his silence, so much has been happening. Mbabazi, you know, since 2016, Mbabazi, after the court uh, proceedings where he sold, uh, is it the electoral commission or the president, and then, um, you know, he lost, Mbabazi disappeared. We see him again in 2021. So Babas is, is more or less irrelevant. Right, so I want to bring in uh, Richard, you mentioned about it, uh, and then we'll start our main topics. Uh, you mentioned about Babas and you were kind of surprised when you saw the two meeting up. What did it tell you the, now that we're in 2020? The first thing we have to understand, is it true that Museven is going to give up the, the, the chairmanship of the NRM? But why? Is Museven's health in, in danger? Or is he going to survive for the whole year to contest for the next president? Because if you see who is going to replace him and is bringing now Amar and Babas, who are supposed to replace him in 2016, that means what they are doing is just a change of guards. He's just calling him that now, why into Chigenda? Can you save our revolution? Now I can hand it over to you that after I depart, you can take care of the family and our revolution so that, that it doesn't die like that. But he's, he's one of the few smartest uh, politicians. Yeah, in but we shall not him. accept him. We shall not accept him. We as Ugandans, <coughs> we want one of the... But he has no relevance. We want a fair, fair election. That's all we want. Even if he's handed over power, even if Museveni right now, as we speak, even if Museveni says Mbavazi is standing in my place, Mbavazi is going to run for, for, president, for presidency, Mbavazi cannot beat Bobby Wine. That's look, sure. look at what you're talking about. It doesn't matter how smart you are. One thing I can say is. Um, Museven is believed to be one of um, the greatest politicians on the African continent. And in politics, there is no permanent enemy. It's a game of interest. For as long as your interests are my interests, then we are friends. There is no permanent enemy, there is no permanent friend. So, um, Mbabazi and Museveni, apparently Museveni is looking for as many allies as he can. So, he's, even if Bobby Wine is ready to go and sit with Museveni, Museveni is very ready. If Besige is ready to sit with him, he's very ready. So that's a political move. Museveni is um, following um, their philosophy of we don't have permanent enemies or friends 
in politics, if our interests are the same, we shall sit on the same table. That's why I agree with um, my senior colleague here, that perhaps Mbabas is facing reality. I cannot become president without the endorsement of Museveni. Maybe as Museveni is leaving, Museveni can give me um, the seat. All right, so, uh, Badri, you have something to add with that? Actually, before? actually, Mbabas, Mbabas is, is coming back to, to Mr. Museveni. It's been rumored for a long time that he, Mbabas is going to come back as the premier, as the head of the, of the government businesses. But um, if you look at the people, Dave, if you look at the people who have defected from NRM and gone back, said you put up a big stunt and he ran to the UK, he fled to the UK. Just after three to six months, Sejusa was, was spotted in the state house, speaking, dining with Museven, having dinner together. And uh, Museven told him that I sent girls to look for you, but they wouldn't find you. So some of them, these, these are like political gimmicks. These are things that are, that are there just to, to confuse Ugandans. So anytime very soon you can see another person who is coming up to be the biggest challenger right now but in actual senses planted by Mr. M7. Mr. M7 will create his own opposition because according to what we are seeing right now, I have no doubt that Amam Mbaba was working for Mr. M7 in 2016 to divide the election, to divide the vote. Because these, these are all the comrades, these are his, 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 his comrades whom he was with in the struggle. Amam Mbaba has been with Mr. M7 for over 40 years. So you, he cannot just wake up one morning and leave. So these are just political gimmicks. These are people that Museven planted, and you will realize very many of them, like Geno Viraro. Geno Viraro came for just two, three months. I disappeared up to now. The Mavirizis, people who didn't even have political integrity to stand in to be president. But this is just political gimmicks that, that Museven is, is, is bringing up, and I don't believe in anyone, even in Mbabazi. Mbabazi works for Museven. Whatever he speaks, no one believed him all in right, All right, buddy, thanks. Uh, you know, I want to, I want to, now let me take you straight away to this year, 2020. It's, it's well known all over Uganda, and of course, all, most of Ugandans know that this is going to be the greatest political year in the history of the country, where we are seeing Honorable Chagwini standing as a candidate. Uh, we know President Seven is also going to stand as a candidate as per now, but we also, we are still doubting whether Dr. Vesey is going to stand as a presidential candidate, plus other candidates. Now, the, the big question is, for you guys, especially in, in the people power, I'm glad that at least three or four of you uh, come from the people power fraternity. The question is, you want only Honorable Robert Chagwini to be fronted as the opposition leader. You don't want anybody else to contest with him, probably going to maybe a national opposition election to get at least one candidate. What you only see is Honorable Chagwini. Is that fair? Is that a democracy that you want to, prom to promote in the country? I, want to I, I, th I think what we do not want to waste is uh, we do not have much time to start going back and forth on who is going to represent us. What has been happening before you've seen a number of candidates coming up on the opposition side and divide the opposition vote, of which is not doing us any good. Right now to beat President Museveni, who has the machinery of the police and the army and vote rigging, you need a block vote of, a, of more than 80% for you to be able to beat President Museveni. So for us to even to start at this point in time, if we were start going to discuss about who and where, who is going to represent from the opposition, we would have done that maybe last year or two years ago. Right now, we do not have time to start bickering and wondering who is going to stand. We know right now, as we speak, we know the candidate who, has the most, who, is, who is most popular among Ugandans. And I would ask for a favor from the rest of the candidates. For example, Dr. Bessi has been running for the last 20 years. It's time to retire, unless he wants to be the opposition dictator. The rest of the people who, like I've seen already, poor have picked up forms. There is a lady who is barely known, and there is a gentleman. These are people are coming up. Even if they get one vote, that's an opposition vote you're taking away. That would have meant a lot to the candidate that is going to run. I think uh, we are kind of aggressive right now. Uh, when you say, oh, oh uh, people in people power don't want to see any other opposition candidate, we do not, this is not a time to waste time. We do not want anyone to waste our time. Because Museveni we are going after, we should all accept Museveni has the machinery to rig and win an election. And for us at least to be able to give Museveni a run for his money, Museveni has the money, he has everything, we need a block vote. At least let's go into a rerun. Let's get 50-50% and go into a rerun. Let's do something that is going to cause even the international community to feel <laughs> like, yes, the, the opposition is really doing something. When you start having people coming in from opposition side and they want an 
at this point in time, 2020, when you see the election is in February, as you said, February, March, and they want to say, oh, we need another candidate. I had the statements from an um, Bozi, from, um, from Nambozi. These statements, Dr. Besige, we love Dr. Besige. I've supported Dr. Besige. I think the first time I voted, voted before was the previous election, 2016, and I voted for Dr. Besige. But it's been 20 years. It's been 20 years. Let him give us a break. And this, you see, as much as sometimes I say, as much as we want to see President Museven go, we don't want to bring the opposition dictators. Because after 20 years, maybe after 10 years, if we still have Bobby Wine still clinging on to, you know, power and is not ready to go, we'll come up and say, hey, Bobby Wine, you tried 20 years. Please step aside for another Bobby Wine. Because another person will come up. Because I want to finish up by saying, I think four years ago, no one knew that there would be another person who would resurrect and resonate with the people and have this kind of popularity Bobby Wine has today. And maybe all our eyes four years ago, after 2026, after even 2016, everyone was looking at Dr. Besige. But right now we have Bobby Wine. I know even tomorrow there will be another person stronger than Bobby Wine with more popularity than him. Bobby Wine, if that time happens and is not yet present, he will step aside. We do not want to start breeding opposition dictators. We've seen Museveni. That's enough. We don't want to even happen on this other side because will be, what are we fighting for if even in opposition we have dictators? All right, so I want to I bring in uh, Imran. Is, is that um, a kind of democracy that uh, the opposition yeah. is trying to promote uh, I, by saying only one candidate? Absolutely. Um, I do not subscribe to that school of thought. Yes, um, Bobby Wine is a very um, popular um, person. And, um, but for opposition to go to the population telling them um, it's either Bobby Wine or nobody, I mean, Donald Trump is so popular in the Republican Party, but the Republican Party has not closed um, any candidate who is willing to run against Trump in the primaries. The Democratic Party did not um, close the doors for any candidate who was willing to run against Barack Obama in 2012 in the primaries. So I don't subscribe to that school of thought that let it's me, either me, Bobby Wayne or nobody. Nobody me, has monopoly over opposition. Let me, let me chip in. So, let me, let me, um, I'm going to bring you in. Let me chip in. I want to hear so nobody has monopoly over opposition. So, um, yes, I support Bobby Wayne. Um, I voted, I, sorry, I, um, I was there in Chad Dondo. I supported him, campaigned for him, and I'll vote for him in 2021. But I don't subscribe to the school of thought that, hey, FDC, you're either with Bobby Wayne Oh, you don't come. If I'm FDC and you're inviting me to a round table or to negotiate and you're not open-minded, so why should I come? I should, let me, let both, me, all of us should come to the round table. All of us should come to the round table when our minds are open that me, anything can let happen. Let me, let me, let me Present me. your candidate. My hey, candidate Dave. is Bobby Wine. He's strong. Um, with these are his values. Right. These um, are the policy measures he's going to pursue. Um, this is the, his financial capacity. Present, um, FDC, present your candidate. Dip, basically. Dip, dip, dip. Right. My, my, my issue, oh, we don't have time. So we should come with yeah. the yeah. open mind. Right, right, so. Let me chip I want, in. I want to bring Let me chip yeah. in. Sure. Uh, the People Power Revolution has opened up the eyes of Ugandans. Ugandans have spoken. So the question at, is, are we grounds. going into an election or look a revolution? At, look, at, look, at, look, at into, look at at the grounds. Look at, at the people. Right. Dr. Vesti has been there for 20 years. Honorable Betty Nambose coming up to make statements. There is one problem that I don't buy to the ideologies of Honorable Betty Nambose. Honorable Betty Nambose had conflicts in DP. And she knows only one trick. That in Uganda's politics, you cannot be relevant if you don't belong to, to any political party. So she's clinging herself to people's government, OFDC, to be relevant. Because if Nambose tries to stand alone, she will be as useless in political atmosphere of Uganda. So she's clinging on Dr. Besige and people's government. Numbers are won without because, endorsement of because, FDC. Because they actually had the candidate again in 2016. She, she knows very well but that if she stands alone and to submit ideas alone herself, she will stand irrelevant. Back to the point that you've said. Uh, right now in Uganda, the biggest population right now in Uganda, 75% are the youths, are the majority. These are people who are educated. And, and they, we know very well. These are people who are learned. Most of them, out of the 75%, about 50% are bachelor's holders. They have degrees. But why do you think that Mr. Museven, whenever he's, he's making posts on Facebook, is mostly emphasizing with the bazookulus? Why? Because he knows very well, these are the disgruntled youth. 
these are the young men who don't have jobs. These are the people that we are looking up to. So the youths who are 75 percent have spoken that Honorable Chagwan should hold the mantle right now. 20 years has been enough for Dr. BCG. Even though you're testing waters for 20 years, the deep end is being too much for Dr. BCG. But, but, Let but, him get out uh, of right, the so, pool. So I want to I I I bring in Rich and then you plan. guys, uh, Imran, will counter Aju, uh, what he's saying. Okay. But, but let, me, let me ask you before you go on. You are a good friend of Dr. BCG, and, mm -hmm. and during his uh, end of the address, mm -hmm. he said mm -hmm. he will not leave any struggle. Mm -hmm. or any electoral position mm -hmm. until the struggle is over. Mm -hmm. That simply means Dr. Vesci is coming back as a president no, no, no. candidate. So what's your opinion let, about let, that? Let's, let's be mature and analyze things that are taking us forward. First of all, Honorable Chagwan is Moses. He's now Moses for the country. There has never been, I'm 54 years, there have never been a politician in Uganda that has united all the people, including the tribes and the region of Uganda, like Honorable Chagwan. So he's our Moses. That's why I come here to defend him so that we, we may be liberated. We don't have any other chance of wasting time who is who that is going to lead us in the but next government. Now let's go to the, sexist, for, for the, the second, second thing. People say that an election, my friend basically said, an election cannot unseat a president, a dictator like him. Look at West Africa. What happened this week? This is a West African country that a long dictator has been uprooted from power by an election. Let's go forward. Let's go to the international community. W what we is going to happen in Uganda to remove Museveni? Because Museveni is a revolutionary. It will need a revolution that will, uh, will take over and be supported by the international community and the Ugandans. I'm going to give you my example. L look at what happened in Iran recently. That man, they, they shot down. How, how was he shot down? If you look at the notices, he was, the, assassinated. he was assassinated. What happened? What they had to do because he was a troublemaker, invisible, they had to go to the UN and have a resolution against him. He was not supposed to travel they did not. To, Bag to Baghdad. It's there. It, you look at the notices. Oh, he was not supposed to be going to Baghdad because he was a troublemaker. What they did first was to go to the United Nations. So what we have to do, can we include the United Nations in our struggle? That's why we are mobilizing the diaspora. I'm going to finish. So, yeah, I'm that, going to finish. Let, me, let me ask you the question again. Mm -hmm. Does that verify mm -hmm. for only Doctor uh, for only Honorable are going to be a presidential candidate? No, 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 no. He, we are we are fast for the country to be in order for everyone to participate again. We have fast to liberate the country and go back to democracy. If we focus now on democracy without defeating a revolutionist, then we shall be defeated. All right, we so needed a revolution and, uh, to uh, defeat a revolutionary in power. Let's and um, if we had uh, Dr. Besige, look at uh, if you're going to follow him from 20, 2016 up to now. Dr. Besige, I remember some of his statements that have been strongly holding, have been, you know, he's is going to go before 2021. Two months ago, he came up with a slogan, Mwebeleremo. Now he's on with a new slogan. I'm forgetting double, the name. Double, double action. Double action. He has been confusing Ugandans for all this time. He's not being, and uh, for Dr. Messenger yeah, to come up, I do not know what he's fearing for him to declare his intentions, because uh, if he's going to declare intention, his intentions, he better, say, he better say whatever he wants to say right now, without wasting our time. But uh, for us, the issue is not, it is, it, I think our intention is not to block out other opposition leaders. But what you are saying, simple common sense, when you have so many opposition leaders, you're dividing the opposition vote. You're not touching the NRM sure. vote. You're dividing the opposition vote. And we are looking for a block vote. We are looking for 80%, of which if you have 20 people on the opposition side, you're not doing anything. Even if you're related to the politics of America, you do not have two Republicans running for president. You have one. And then the other side also has one. So, you know, the but winner takes it off. they don't close the door. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, do you have yeah. anyone who is going to stand for two? Even if they don't close the door, any other person no, who, who, because, who, let me, who yeah, has the intention of standing point, against point, Trump right now, it is a public side. He's going to lose if it. You look at, if you look at what is happening right now in Uganda, Museveni coming out and saying that by 2021, he doesn't want to see opposition in Uganda. He knew very well that Dr. Bisky has weakened. Exactly. Because you, you cannot provoke to that extent. And you make a statement like that. That, that that's why. That's yes. why. Museveni that's, boldly came out and said. That's why. That Museveni does not know where Bes Bobi Wine came from. Right, okay, so and so and, so and so I'm so telling you, the pressure on President Museveni right now. 
is the coming of, of Bobby it's Wine. Because that. because he didn't know, he knew the city had weakened 20 years that's running right. and that's he had that's failed. That's so the popularity of Bobby Wine coming up and massively being supported by the youth who constitute 75% of the population, it has taken, made him seven run crazy. Uh. You've seen him, he's singing, he's giving, he's appointing the likes of full figure. Who in this world would think and a Musebe, president, Musebe a president of this nature, a revolutionist, a president? He said he's one of the best presidents, you know, respected I in Africa. Politician, politician. politician. Why would a politician of his nature select a presidential advisor like full figure? Because it's part of politics. Yeah, Imran, I want to bring you yeah, in. Yes, What's um, the reaction of uh, uh, yes, what's you going see, on? You see, um, what we have in 21, we have a mountain to climb. So, as people who believe in change, who want to overthrow Museveni, we need each and everybody's support. Um, 2021, we have 19.4 million um, registered voters. We have 141 districts. Um, we have 80 municipalities. We have um, 200 sub-counties. We have 2,000 um, um, parishes. We have villages. Um, there are 65, um, there are 65,000 villages, um, and 35,000, sorry, and 35,000 polling stations. Right. This is my point. Um, when you're going to go against Museveni, the person who has all the resources he has, um, because he can simply use our national treasury, you need each and everybody's support. So, FDC, FDC is the strongest opposition party in Uganda. So, as people power, as supporters of Bobby Wayne, we need FDC. And apparently, FDC, um, their man is Bessie. So, we need to sit on a round table with an open mind and convince them that, hey, we are not radicals. We are not saying if it's not Bobby Wayne, then you guys, you're not making sense. Come, let's sit on a round table. This is the guy we are facing. We need your support. But if our tone is that radical, we are not attracting them. Yeah. To let, come me, let me, let me, let me, let me make a simple. Brother, Imran, it's, let me, it's, let me, not, it's not that. Let me, let me ask mm. you a question. Why did FDC fail to have polling agents on 15,000 uh, polling sessions? Why did yeah. they fail? And that's why we need them. No, but what why? The, the question is simple. Finances. Finances. So, so, we need, so the problem that we so have, we need the problem that every we have, support financially, have, economically. No, the problem that we have, we feel that without FDC structures, people power cannot stand. That's what you're trying to speak, because you're saying power ten. Yeah. Dr. Bessie announced power ten, is now speaking about some other things. No, but uh, let me make a right, let, so me, yes, make, let me make, make a simple let me before before let me make a statement before you you close up this. Uh, for you, from what I'm getting from you, it is as if you're insinuating that uh, because if you're asking us to go and ask permission from FDC, it no is as if or, or, sit on a round table. Or, or, or sit on a round table. It is as if you're saying the problems you you, you FDC are not seeing the problems of I Uganda. Saw, no, the I, problems I, of Uganda I, right I, now are bigger than any political party. Absolutely. We are looking absolutely. for someone, just one but, uh, individual. Who is going to take let us me, to the finish line? Let me ask line. you this. Uh, you your guys in people power have hmm. always advocated for one, human rights, and two, democracy. So how are you going to have democracy if you cannot accept other leaders to come and... We want, we, we want everyone to be part of us. We want, in fact, what we are asking for right now. We are, the only thing we are asking for that is confusing everyone, we are only demanding for one opposition candidate. No to divide the opposition vote. It does, it does not take away democracy in a country. It does not take, take away democracy in a country. But, uh, but uh, again, let me, let me finish up. Yeah, sure. But the other thing for you to say at this point in time, or oh, we go to a round table and ask FDs and ask DP, this is beyond political parties. The problem of we want to liberate this ourselves. Is Uganda is at a place. Down there. We, been given chances. Yes, 20 years. Dr. Is now what are we consulting from you? You see, you see, you see. I respect Dr. Vestia. No, we like Dev. Dev, I respect Dr. Vestia so much, and he's one of the biggest political players and we, we respect him. Everyone salutes him because of the efforts that he has put in the struggle. But there is only one thing. He shouldn't be a dictator in the struggle. He has been given That's chances true. for 20 years. In 20 let me, years. Let me give an example. And, and how let, me give, Dave, how, Dave. Let, me, let me ask you before, before you give me an example. 
how different is it by you dictating supporters dictating that an opposition candidate to represent the opposition no, but yes. because, because the has been tested because you yes, exactly no, your, your child cannot repeat p7 five times and you still keep them in and control. again and again as ugandans who are desperate for change who have never seen any other president we are saying we know one of the problems why we've not been winning an election against president Museveni. it is because we have so many opposition leaders and they end up dividing the opposition vote so as Ugandans, we are speaking and saying, give us one opposition leader to run against President Museveni. Oh, it is yes. simple. It doesn't need that rocket science. Be that should be the tone. That should be the tone. Thank you very uh, much. That should be the tone. Give us one opposition candidate. Where are the winds of going to Let me take back my There are two things Richard. here yeah. we are arguing about. Right. Right in this studio, we even said it last time, numbers, they said there is a momentum of understanding between FDC and people power. That is between Honorable Bochagwan and the CJ. What does the CJ lose if it's a, a good freedom fight and want to take a part of the national cake? And he's the vice president of a country, of a country well, liberated. BCJ has not yet. We are not playing okay, games guys, here. Guys, 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 guys. Mm -hmm. So what does Honorable Bochagwan lose? lose. Thank you very much. Accept, uh, no, no you but very you know, what, you, what you don't understand right now, the issue right now, no, 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 the issue right now, what you have just like he said, Honorable Chagulani is Moses. Honorable Chagulani is resident. Honorable Chagulani is a youth who understands the problems of 75% of the population. In fact, Ugandans have been able, if you see where he's coming from when he was still, when he was still contesting for MP, so many people do not understand him. But they've seen him grow, and again, when you look at this entire population, we're talking about 75%, he understands their problem and they understand him. They speak the same language. Literally, sometimes you see him sometimes going back and speak the language, you know, the, the street slang. People understand him. He understands the problems of the people. And if you have someone like that, Unless you have a problem. I'll give an example. It is like in America right now, knowing very well that uh, Trump is still popular with the people, and you bring another Republican. You're crazy. You're crazy. Right now you have Chagulani, and it has, it has been shown. It is open there in the, you know, in the diaspora, back home in Uganda, what? the young people. Even we have now the old, Where when I speak to my mom, my mean, mom now understands Chagulani. Five yeah. years ago, six years ago, she did not. We may, we may, we may disagree, we may disagree on very many things. We may, we may disagree on very many things. But one thing opposition does agree on. If we do not have a sole candidate as opposition in 2021, we are doomed. So, let's open our minds. Yes, it can be Chagulani. I, for one, I want Chagulani to be the candidate of opposition. But I cannot convince a staunch FDC who does still believe in BCJ and he has, is, is an MP from one of those um, districts deep down there that don't even have access to social media. Um, I mean, Bobby Wine is as famous as anything else on social media. Because you're not on no, ground. Yeah, yeah, my you're, because you're not on ground. No, you, 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 you're, speaking, you're, speak, time. you're speaking from America. Uh, no, but you, um, but uh, again, uh, let you me... See, you see, you see, this is not nuclear. This is not nuclear. This is not rocket science. You see, you see, David, I had an extraordinary opportunity when I was in Uganda. I was the speaker of Uganda National Students Association. I had a chance to travel to nearly 100 districts in Uganda. There are those districts. This is not too long ago. ago. This was 2017 and then in 2018. There are those districts in Uganda, Ajumani, Nakapilipiliti. They don't have any access to a smartphone. So we need each and every voter down there so, we ca as opposition, we have to unite. We don't know who knows who down there because we need him. FDC has 36 members of parliament and more than any other opposition party in Uganda. So, if people power, we, our tone is being this radical. We are discouraging no, them but, but, to but, join but, us. Let me tell you, but we need I think them. what brings the ra radicalism, as you call it, it is Ugandans are tired. You must understand, at this place, where we are right now, we cannot hold anything or anyone with, with you know, simple hands and gloves. Because if Bessinger insists and comes back in 2021, I am telling you, we are going to hold Bessinger accountable for failing Ugandans to get the change they want.
Besige is going to face it really rough. Besige is going to have a problem. Because see, it is Mr. going Africa, to be very clear. Thank you. It is going to be very clear that Besige is working with President Museveni to frustrate. The, the because we must just, accept just, just all Ugandans. Majority second. of Ugandans that are tired just, of just President Museveni. All right, all right. Just so seconds. let me give you 30 just, seconds. Just 30 uh, seconds. Uh, I'll give him 30 seconds. Uh, and maybe my brother, thank different. you so much about the, the point you submitted that most of the people in the villages don't have a, a, internet access to, to internet. Bobby Wine, wherever he has gone, even before aspiring as the Chadondo MOP. Bobby Wine had his grassroots as, as Bobby Wine. Chagulanyi has his grassroots as Bobby Wine. Because he has performed in some because of those areas. he has performed to all those villages. I got a chance to be in Karamoja, a place called Dabim. I met a young boy of 12 years. That was 2009. I, I was in Karamoja for six months. That boy asked me, in Kampala do you see Chameleon and Bobby Wine physically? That's the, that is the plus was, for that us. That was 209. That's the, the plus for us. The boy was 12 years. He asked me, in Kampala, you mean you see Bobby Wine physically? I told him, yes. This is the boy who is in Abim. From you Abim, we go to Kotido. So what I'm saying, Bobby Wine has used his establishment because he's a musician. Yeah, exactly. To reach out you to see, moderator, exactly. um, through yeah, you, allow me to ask my colleagues the question. We have, we have members of parliament. The chance, I what we have to do right, right now. Do you believe that we have members of parliament who, be, who are see, in parliament with 15,000 votes? And they, they are members of parliament, David, Jews, so, David, so, parliament so, with 60,000 votes? But, but you have David, I just want to ask my colleagues a question. Do we need Dr. BCJ in 2021? Yes. This is what? what yes, we need him. Dr. BCJ, we need him on the campaign trail. If Bobby Wine is campaigning in Guru, we want Dr. BCJ in Arua campaigning for Bobby Wine for change. We do not want Besige as a presidential candidate. Just like what has been happening in opposition right now. You've had Besige, the people power, fraternity going out and campaigning for FDC candidates. So and you've seen Besige candidate. Uh, what what happened in Jinja? The you. person oh. who came up in Jinja, Imuiru, when was FDC? But you saw Bobby yeah. Wine going to on the yes. campaign trail with Besige. Can we just do that? Dev, Dev, in conclusion, Dev, no, let, me give you, let me give you information. For, for let me give, Dev, in, in, right, just one second. One second. In 19, in, uh, when Dr. Samogere came in 96, he failed. When they came back, Dr. Samogere was told, please leave for Nasa Ntege Sivagara, because he was the man holding the mantle by that time. When Nasa Ntege Sivagara failed to come because of his qualifications, he said no. They told him front Dr. Besige. Dr. Yeah. Besige himself was fronted by Nasa Ntake Sivak. No one knew he does. And he sit back and front Dr. They are, they, 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 they actually sat on the round table and you are the endorsement. I, I, I want to thank you for, 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 for your submissions. But let me, let me look into uh, next Monday, starting uh, January 6th. The People Power Organization of Movement is starting their consultations. Now, the, I want you guys to, to draw a, a broader picture into these consultations. Are these consultations to find out who's going to be the right candidate for people power, or they're just confirming that Hore Bobi Wine is going to become the president? So he's kind of like informing Ugandans that I'm coming, I'm coming as a president. Or it's going to be an open uh, world discussing that maybe Imran could be another presidential candidate representing people power. Could be Sarah, could be uh, Badu, could be Richard. So uh, I want to start with, uh, with Richard. <laughs> I want to start with you. When you see what's going on in the country, mm -hmm. people power is going to do consultations. Mm -hmm. Are they hopeful to people power as a fraternity or just Bobby Wine as a candidate? No, it's, it's, it's early campaigning. Consultation and early campaigning. And early sabotage of, the, of, of people power. Let me give you an example. I saw today, I mean, because I have to confirm it through the media, then put it on record, that one of the hotels in Chittigum that Honorable Chagwany had asked has been turned down because the owner was told not to host him there. Do you think it's fair you tell a presidential candidate for the country who is going to consult people and you give him venues only that he must consult in a hotel? Is that fair democracy? Is that fair democracy? No, oh yes, that's no. They are trying to do everything, but I want to tell them openly what is going to happen. One more mistake that they are going to mess up with this country, or Honor Bachagwe. They go down in history, in defeat. Yeah, because they, people are not going to wait for, right, their, so, so, the, for, the, the for their nuisance anymore. Getting back on my question, mm -hmm. are these consultations benefiting just Honorable Robert Chagrani or the People Power Movement? The, are they open for anybody to become a candidate? No. The no I mean, first of all, from what I understood, sorry, he yeah. has a policy document that he's supposed to come up. If you read this post today, he has a policy document that he's supposed to come up. But he felt uh, 
it did not it was unfair because if you saw his post today he put up uh, uh, he put up a post and said can we just can you just pull out your views on what you want in a new Uganda and and all that? I think part of the reasons why he's consulting the whole country is uh, he they don't want to come up with a policy document alone, minus engaging the populace to know what do Ugandans really need, what do Ugandans what are what are the problems Ugandans are facing, what do they want to see in a new, in new Uganda? Because even if uh, if we are going to, it must be a proper document that is going to involve all Ugandans. It should not come from Chagulanyi and a, a few techno, you know, a few members of his team that have come up with something to represent Ugandans. Him going out there, you may call it a campaigning, he, it may be showing up his face to the people, but just like he said, the advantage we have, we have with Bobby Wine is that Bobby Wine for the last 20 years, Bobby Wine started singing in, in 2000, for the last 20 plus years, his face has been to every corner of Uganda. All we have to do right now is to let Ugandans understand that the Bobby Wine, you know, as a musician on the ballot paper is going to appear as Robert Chagulanyi. So we are only making Ugandans understand that they, in fact, Bob, Electoral Commission should allow him to bracket off Bobby Wine on his name or uh, in the, you know, on a, on a ballot paper so that people may know, oh, this is Bobby Wine, this is Chagulanyi. But his face is known. Kids, young, wherever you go, they can sing to his music. They can sing to his music. That's the advantage we have. And we do not want, and that's what we were saying, we do not want anyone to rain on our parade right now. When we have someone who has built his name as a populist, who has, who has resonated with Ugandans for so long, over 20 years as a musician, he has been to every part of Uganda, performed as a musician. So, as going back to the consultations, it is, whatever, I know definitely after the consultation, it's going to cement, uh, they are going to go back, whatever they want to come up with the policy document, they want to involve all the views of Ugandans. But my prayer right now is, let me hope he's not going to be stopped from consulting, because what we have in Uganda right now, electoral commission can endorse you, police can say something else, and then Museveni gives orders. All right, so um, um, I, I want to bring in uh, Imran, yeah, um, and I'll come to you about it. Yeah, um, maybe to give um, our viewers some preamble of what we have in 2020. Um, um, the Constitution of Uganda um, under Article 59 um, gives each and every Ugandan a right to vote who is above um, the age of 18. And then um, Article 60 of the Constitution of Uganda establishes the Electoral Commission, um, which is appointed by the President and then um, with approval of parliament. So, um, Bobby Wayne um, is a pending um, presidential candidate. He notified the Electoral Commission that he has intentions to run in 2020, um, 2021 um, elections. So, Electoral Commission gave him a go, a go ahead. But um, as um, my colleague has said, Sarah, yes, Electoral Commission might give you a go ahead, but still um, we are not so sure because um, you know our constitution is really very funny. That very constitution that gives the EC powers to um, give candidates go ahead to go ahead with their political um, consultations, it creates the Uganda police, which is okay. But it gives, um, um, I think it's Article 211 functions of the Uganda police, right, right. whereby the functions of the Uganda police, some of them is to detect crime. So. Uganda police can abruptly come up and arrest you. Um, it seems, David, you're going to commit a crime. So we are going to arrest you. Arrest. Arrest. Right. Um, so because it has powers under the Constitution. And then, of course, we cannot forget um, the Public Order Management um, Act. Act of 2011. So as Bobby Wine is going out to the population, he has those two challenges, the Public, um, order, the public order, um, order Management Act and the article that, um, that fake article, because no, I mean, when you look into a good constitution, principles of a, con a good constitution, you cannot have such a vague um, clause like that. And you should add on also powers from above, surpasses uh, even what the constitution uh, says. <laughs> and, you know. So, so that's so, the challenge, the challenge is that uh, you guys so, are going to be yes, so, so the so, so the challenge is Bobby Wayne is going to face with his consultation. Um, you, is Uganda police okay with it? Um, does it can it act with um, the can it um, uh, and can it um, hide under the public management um, act to prevent him? So, to answer your question, um, is he going to consult as 
pass on who's, team as who's going to run for uh, president, president. Oh, it's gonna be or somebody else can come in people power. I'm openly no Bobby Wayne is running for president. So we do not expect any other opposition any other people power candidate. Um I can ask my colleagues a question. Um God forbid, what if Bobby Wayne is no more? What is our strategy as people power? And that's where um, I strongly say, no, we cannot simply tell FDC, basically, if you're not endorsing Bobby Wine, no, because anything is possible. I'm saying, God forbid, if can Bobby I, Wine is not available. Can, can I say something? So um, we have to be open so minded. No, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I just right, want sorry. to answer to that. Just to say, what if Bobby Wine is no more? In 2016, no I'm one is not no, available. No one knew there would be a Bobby Wine. No, Bobby Wine had no. even no intentions of going into politics. Well, so and you when the sorry, sorry, election, you, you the place went vacancy. You, you what I'm going to say, you know, so it, to what I'm trying to say effort. is if Bobby Wine is no more, another person stronger than even Bobby well, Wine that's not my will point. come up. That's not my, my question is if he's unavailable. Very Bobby good. Wine is exactly. a is that's a human the, being. No, that's Anything what, can that's, happen. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. So, 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 even so, 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 so we have to so we have to be we have we have to be open minded. Even you, Imran, as even you can so, even you can't. Anything Imran, can happen to any human being. Even you, even you can go and spearhead the revolution. Absolutely. But but people power. If our own is that's why that's why Bobby Wine or nobody else. No, that's why Robert Chagulani. We are testing our our opposition forces. No, my brother. That's why Robert Chagulani says the revolution. Solution is for you, yes, not for him as an individual. Yes, that he says, is not there tomorrow, move. That's why he says it's not, not about him. It's not, there, right. and can be there. it's not about so him, and, and your tone is it's about him. No, 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 no. It's no. Right. Our tone, I think I think you're getting us wrong. For you're what saying we are saying, if it's not Bobby Wayne, nobody else. No, what we are saying right no. now, when it comes to the presidential candidature. Instead of having other opposition leaders, and I want people who are viewing us to understand, instead of having other opposition leaders who are going to divide the opposition vote, we are saying we want only Chagulani on that ballot paper. And why? We've tested moments Which? of where you've had so many opposition leaders, and instead, of, and when you look at all the votes, votes coming together, if they were together, we would have a rerun. Which is which is oh, absolutely so, okay, yes, let's, let's but to. we need the other forces as we well. We cannot to, simply we want push them, to them like away with that radical tone. We want them let's, to campaign for right, Chagulani. So, so Let I'm, them campaign. I'm going to take you back to um, to my side, uh, and and I thank you guys for for all your submissions. And of course, our viewers, we thank you for always watching you again at Crossroads. We always come here and discuss a number of key issues, and 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 we try to find out the possibility of whether. The country can actually change. Like what many people power positions are saying, opposition uh, affiliate members are saying that Uganda maybe needs probably Honorable which are going to be the president. We have seen also other polit other political organizations. DP may also front someone, FDC. Dr. Besgen, during his end of year address, he clearly stated that he will stand as a political, he will, he will not leave any electoral position unless the struggle is over. So you should, you and I know that the struggle is not yet over. It's still running up to 2021 in the coming uh, general elections. So the question is, will these opposition leaders, just as they say, we are working, we are having memorandums of understandings and others, will it be possible for actually these opposition leaders to stand? Just to remind you, FDC has not changed their constitution as we speak, meaning they have to present someone that is what the constitution asks for. Now, guys, but, uh, I'm, but I'm, if I'm, I'm going to ask you it, something, I'm leave it there. yeah, if I'm going to ask something, right now, Dr. Besige is leading the people's government. Is he still in FDC or FDC or people's government uh, uh, is one uh, of the uh, factions uh, of uh, uh, FDC? Uh, yes, yes, I, I, um, believe, I, I was going there. So, um, towards the end of the year, there were addresses that were given by one Honorable Robert Chagulani. I started the show with that. Uh, President Museven gave his address and. Dr. Vesija gave his address. Dr. Vesija says, this year we are going to work so hard on uniting the forces of opposition. Honorable Chagran says, this year we are working so hard on bringing together all these opposition leaders of different fraternities in Uganda. President Museveni is also enjoying his stay in power and saying we are going to work hard towards improving the infrastructure, the, the education system has improved, and the fact is, yes, the literacy level in Uganda has improved during the tenure of President Seven. What has now, improved? After the literacy. Years. 
literacy level has increased by 76%. That's a fact. After now, 35 years. After 35 years. So, so, so the question is, when they talk about the unity, and you people down on the ground, or people who are just supporting these individuals, are still disunited, how possible is that unity? Thank you very yeah. much. I mean, the question to, um, if I was NRM, I could ask um, my colleagues in opposition, you people cannot even um, sort out things in your house and you want to take the mantle of the country. No, so as opposition, we really need um, to, lower our, to lower our tones, talk to each other, come up with, um, of course, one opposition candidate, and we can defeat um, seven. But um, our tone on social media attacking Dr. Besige and then FDC attacking Bobby Wine, that Museven is benefiting. Actually, if I'm Museven, I'm like, yes, push on. This is the Bobby Wayne supporters. Attack yourselves because I benefit. But uh, if I may, yeah. I may ask, All if right. I may say Sorry, something, may what, are, what, are, yeah. what options do the people in NRM have? You've seen, uh, you know, you saw what happened with the guy who wanted to contest for NRM chairmanship. What happened to him? What options do they have? They are stuck. Don't you think there are people who have potential? See what happened with the... With that, the that's exactly the same you know, question. We, 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 you see what happened with Mbabazi. Mbabazi had been promised that in 2020, 20, 2016, he was going to be the, the presidential candidate. And then Museveni, in his cunning way, threw Mbabazi aside. So what options do they have? They don't also have an option. There are so many people in NRM who would want to see change as well, but what option do they have? They do not have an option. What we have on the other side, when you go to the opposition side, we have so many people who have potential to stand. But uh, I think what I, I see with the position right now is a little bit of greed. Everyone feels like if I'm not the one leading, I cannot be behind someone. And what we are looking at, we can, you know, Dr. Besige, as much as Bobby Wine could be half the age of Dr. Besige, there is nothing wrong with Dr. Besige being behind Bobby Wine. Just you as know? it is, there is nothing wrong with no, Dr. Uh, Chagrin being behind Dr. Yes, yes. Exactly. True. Exactly. But what we are saying, Dr. Besige has tested the waters for 20 years. We have every reason to stand up and say no to Dr. Besige. He has t tested the water for 20 years and he has we, failed us. But, so but, for but, us, but, as you then, then, as you then, then, there is, Dave, there is yeah, a statement sure. that Dr. Besige said last time that he is also fighting for himself. Uh, um, we believe in Dr. Besige. But as I told you... He's fighting for himself as a Ugandan. Your child cannot repeat primary seven or form four for five times and you still keep them there. You take them to take in course school. You take them you find other school. options. You take them to vocational if schools. You, if, you you have, if you have time, I can... But I, what I, now, I, I want to... I want, I want, I want, so, so, so uh, shortly, Mr. Tom Seven is, is operating on divide and roll. Definitely. For all this time long, Mr. Tom Seven has used the tool of money. By because Mr. Um, Seven is the lock of money in Uganda. By the way, um, Abraham Lincoln lost presidents five times. And the sixth, the sixth time he became president. Because and there now was the, no option. And he's now the greatest no, president of the United States. There was no option. I want, I want, but but we have the option. And it, 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 simply, in Uganda, we are not going to, in 2021, we are not choosing a president. We are choosing a liberator. And the the people, place uh, where we are right it's, now, it's, sorry, it's, sorry, it's, we, it's the people, we are looking for it's, a liberator. It's the people who have spoken right now. It's the people, it's not Lord and, and I'm telling it's you, Bobby Wine could only so, serve so, one so, time. We that. are looking uh, for I'm a liberator. Yeah, just, this just, is not just, just a matter of just changing that. Just a few seconds. You cannot operate no more in abnormal stations. Right now, the Poma is there. These are all strategies used by dictators to curtail people. They will change the constitution. What happened? Kwame Nkrumah, he liberated Ghana. But the moment he tried to tamper with the revolution, he, he tampered with the revolution, with the constitution. Kwame Nkrumah was the father of Ghana, but he's not praised in Ghana. He's praised outside Ghana because he tried to change the constitution as it was made. All right. So all the dictators, and he was thrown out, all the dictators will bring all possible ways. They will put the public order management bills, they'll put everything just to incarcerate, to put you down. So Bobby Wine has to operate in abnormal situations. He has also to operate abnormal. That's why, that's why he says he will do it the Robert Dobbs style. 
Don't so, expect Robert Chagulan, even though he's catching at different times. All right, so Robert Chagulan will me. continue, just in a, in, in a few seconds. Let me, let me. Robert Chagulan will continue consulting in all ways possible. True. Even though it's being curtailed by the police. Let me, let me bring in uh, Richard. Okay. Do we need Dr. Vesige? Yes. And FDC? Yes. Or yes. yes. Let, let me give you an example. Thank you. The opposition in Uganda is not only about winning the president, because the, the president is going to be won by Honorable Chagwan. We need the FDC, the DPs, the UPC, to make sure that we get 90% of all the MPs. Remember, they are going to do gerrymandering in the country. Yes. You see, we, why doesn't also Vesige agree and we we focus on the area so that all the areas where there is an MP, for example, in the Western no. area where there is an MP or, for, or NRM. for NRM and FDC takes it. That's also winning, uh, winning strategy. Yes. And let's, let, let's go forward from here. The economic strategy for the country. Who has a better economic strategy for the country? We people power have the best economic policy. But, but you ourselves. haven't presented no, 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 no. It's, um, it's people, so power, um, people power, apparently, people power has no policy it, measures it, they no, are pursuing. Let me take my microphone back. Let me ask you a question. People power has not presented their mm -hmm. policy. So mm -hmm. you don't have any. No, no, it's, ca it's coming out. It's as, 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 as Mr. Richard, Mr. Richard, Mr. Richard, let me have a whole other chance when Mr. Richard give out a policy without a consultation of the majority. Mr. 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 Richard, Mr. Mr. Richard, Mr. Mr. Richard, let me help. What is happening, Mr. Richard? Let me help you. It's going to come right out. Now, our, our right now in Uganda, it's going to liberate the country from poverty, from oil, from backward. A hundred percent. Mr. Richard, let me help. We cannot continue with this. Let me chip in for a minute. Let me chip in for a minute. Let me chip in for a minute. Right second. now in Uganda, the circulation, the, the, the money in the economy that is in circulation is 20 billion. Mm -hmm. The economy is already failed. Mm -hmm. So the manifesto is all the failures of NRM. Exactly. And it's exactly everyone knows all the failures of NRM. We all agree in opposition. So, we agree. So it's like asking, what is Bobby Ryan going to do but Museven has failed everything. Museven when has you know failed what has failed. Yeah, Museven has failed, Museven has, has, has failed tourism. Museven has failed the, the, agriculture. The, 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 the health. Museven has failed That's agriculture. True. Service delivery. Museven, all everything. service delivery. Public, public service. Museven has failed everything. And all, the, and everything. The, all the banks have closed. Cooperative banks have closed in Uganda. Bank all the agricultural banks have closed in Uganda. Bankless bank. Those are foreign banks. And, 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 and bankless bank left Uganda. You, and, exactly. And, and just, so, let me just uh, when, when you speak about policies, speak about all the failures. And 100% NRM has failed. Right. And uh, let me just Sorry. throw in one simple You're thing for our, view, for our viewers and people who may be, who may totally not understand, who may say, oh, where are the policies? For example, let me just speak a little from corruption. The simplest way, because you're going to say, oh, what is Bolo Honore Bochagule going to do with corruption? You had, after 35 years or 33 years, President Museveni, the best he has done for us in 33 years is to work against corruption. The simplest way is, even simple rocket science, the people who are corrupt, we know them. People who have stolen, we know them, they are there. Get them, put them in jail. Look up all their properties. They have all these properties in Uganda. Set up all their properties. Take them back. Collect all the money. It is simple common sense. Even it a child. Need a it, doesn't it doesn't need a master's. It doesn't need a PhD. It needs common sense. You mean you can fail. These guys have wealth invested in Uganda. If you can follow it up, you can close all the accounts but that the problem, belong abroad. Sarah, supplementary to that. The problem is nepotism. Museveni put his brothers and his aunties in these key positions. So whenever you touch on your brother, you put your, your, your cousin inside the prison, they will call you in the family. Please. That's your son. His father helped you. Please, that's the problem. Nepotism. You cannot operate when it's your brothers around the, 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 these, these, these to implement the policies. I believe Museveni's, Museveni's problem is that he brought all his family and he put them in all key, 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 key structures of government. So he cannot account for, 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 for their stealing. I believe right, so in opposition, we all agree. Then we'll go off the other topic. And I think, I, I believe in opposition, we all agree on um, the current status quo, economically, health, um, education, it's um, a total mess. We all agree on that. DP, FDC, um, People Power, Gemma, we all agree on that. As opposition, we simply need to sit on a round table. Um, we have nearly 426 constituencies right. in parliament. Um, 
apparently um, NRM occupies over 216 of those constituencies. We see how can we take over parliament because um, again and again I've revised our constitution um, when it comes to impeachment of a president um, after the Americans impeached theirs. I'm like, okay, what if this question comes in Uganda? Because with the current constitution of Uganda, impeachment of a president is very easy for as long as you have the majority. Yes, tomorrow um, Bobby Wayne is in office and NRM are still the majority in parliament. They can kick him out. And um, let me, let me, uh, let me you know, from so where... Opposition, we just need to unite. You know, from where you're coming from, where you said we need all opposition, and that's why I'm going to put this assertion and say... I think it's about time, this time, because we need one presidential candidate. We can have the likes of Besige, the likes of all these other po opposition leaders focus on winning the, op the, M the member of parliament seats so that we have majority. Because uh, you cannot, uh, as the rest are campaigning, for example, if Besige, Bobby Wine is on the trail for presidency, we can have Dr. Besige and the rest on trail for members of parliament. Exactly. We but, want but to overturn know, the numbers in parliament. you know the gerrymandering that has happened in Uganda right now? I've told you earlier that there are members of parliaments who are, in you, who are in the House and they, they entered there because they want 10,000. Their constituency constitutes about 15,000 people. And they are going to be submitting their views with people who went to parliament with 70,000 votes, 60,000 votes. There are MPs. There is this guy from that side of Bunyode. He went in parliament with 15,000 votes. I think... Um, I so, think so, so, the, so the one, problem we have right now... Let me end up with this. With the show. Where is the future of Uganda in 2020? The future of Uganda lies in Ugandans. Just like the statement is uh, Ugandans have every power in their hands to cause the change they want. It is not in the hands of Bobby Wine. It is not in the hands of sure. Museveni. It is not even in the hands of uh, Dr. Besige. It is uh, what has happened right now. Before the future used to be in the hands of, Be of President Museveni, where Ugandans didn't know what was going on. Majority of Ugandans have been awakened, even the old. When I speak to my mother, she knows what is going on. Because the biting poverty is biting all Ugandans, no matter your age gap. The biting, when they go to a hospital, all of them cannot find services. When uh, your child is sick, it is all of you suffer from lack of medication from these hospitals. So it is going entirely to depend on Ugandans. Ugandans, you're going to come out in huge numbers and vote. And you do not leave the safeguarding of, of, of the vote, safeguarding of the vote to any other individual. It is, you're going to be part of it. This is not about Obama becoming president. It is about Ugandans liberating themselves so that you are able to be, because what is happening right now, you, you don't have leaders that are accountable because they've been in power for so long that they've lost morality. You need to have a new set of leaders. When they still come in, at least fresh and young, they have some bit of morality and you can hold them accountable and even you can kick them out. What you have right now it is completely destroyed, so it is going to take every Ugandan. Don't think this is about Bobby Wine. Bobby Wine, I still tell people, Bobby Wine was living a comfortable life. Bobby Wine is not among the Ugandans who lacked before he joined politics, no. But there are Ugandans who cannot go who can go without a meal a day, whose kids are not failed to get school fees, who have no land even to plant, a, you know, a stem of Matoke. Bobby Wine has that land. So we should not look at Bobby Wine as an individual and say, oh, this is all about Bobby Wine, this is all about Besige. This is what I said, this is beyond Bobby yes. Wine or any political parties, this is beyond Besige. This is about Ugandans liberating themselves and getting the change they entirely deserve. And we get leaders who are servants of the people, not leaders who are... You know, who are serving themselves, who take care of them and their own family, who look at Uganda as a small company, who, leaders who are milking a cow they've not fed. We want to, you know, to change the status quo and have leaders who are going to be accountable. All right, so Richard. So my, this is my submission. This is in our history of the country and the world. We have never had a golden chance like this. I don't know if people are, are, are watching very what has happened to, to this Iranian man. It was the UN resolution or a UN order that they had to use to eliminate this man. These people in, in NRM have been there. They say they are invisible. They will never get, be got out of power. Even by election, they will affiliate. They, they, so they're going to get out the army. But once a United Nations order is given to a leader like Museveni or his army or the Special Force Command, right from Mombasa, a UN or a US missile can take out anyone that they want to. Our, our aim now, our, our way forward now to liberate the country is the diaspora. I always say that let's mobilize the diaspora. Let's be ready 
Let's mobilize the diaspora. Let's not sleep. We, this is the golden time that the world will come to us in time of need to rescue the country. They will not come to us when we are just see, seeing what is happening in Uganda. It will come from us, the diaspora, when the country is in lockdown. We come together like we are here. We come in town hall meeting. We get resolution. We tell them, you people, come to our rescue. What I feel is killing people. This one is, the, so major so is killing people. This so, so, so when they come to, to our rescue, they'll take out this man. He will go. In history, he will be defeated. But if we fear for paying a price, we shall never take our liberty back unless we risk Dave. losing our lives. Dave, Dave. Dave. Uh, uh, what, what I think is that Ugandans have to, to stand out in 2020 and speak what's going to happen in 2021. Uh, the reason as to why we shouldn't best, um, I will interject, Mr. I'll object. The reason as to why I don't want Ugandans to count on the international powers as so far right now, we have the African Union <laughs> in Africa. African Union is a backing dog. They cannot do anything right now. So, Ugandans, this is the revolution of the people. Actually, we need to account for Ugandans first. In international law, um, there is sovereignty of every state. So United Nations cannot intervene in our politics unless when there is a human there is um, a yes, human exactly. rights, rights abuse. Sovereignty, abuse. Yeah, exactly. Sovereignty still stands. So my appeal is to Ugandans. This is your time. Ugandans should wake up. Ugandans should sit sit at the front of this because these people feel that they are the pioneers of Uganda. These people they feel own it. They came to stay. These people feel they, 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 they own Uganda right now. That's why Museveni is bringing everything possible to intimidate a common Ugandan, like how he's marching from, from Sijui where to Kabamba to where. <laughs> Museveni is marching because he has deployed the army in all those villages where he's going to be passing to put fear in Ugandans, to instill fear in Ugandans. So this is a cause for a common Ugandan. This is a cause for the person on ground. We shouldn't, as, as we wait for the UN, as we wait for the African Union, Ugandans should be involved in 2020 and 2021 to make sure that we transform the country, to make sure that everything works for the people. We, we remove the dictator and his group, because dictator, the dictator's group is about 15 people who are in command, who are sharing the national cake, and they give the, these, these small drops out to, 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 the, to the few individuals around. So common Ugandans have to stand out by themselves right. as we wait for the African Union and the, the United Nations. Yeah, Imran, you have uh, your take on Yeah, uh, we are concluding. No, we, we are, we're uh, almost there. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> my take, I mean, they all sub, um, they, their submissions, it's like they are concluding, but um, my take is um, uh, unification among opposition is not an option. It's the only way we can be victors in 2021. That's not option. Um, and then to my direct message to my generation, um, each and every generation has an obligation to make sure that the next generation is actually doing good. Um, okay. The way our fathers and grandparents had an obligation to ensure um, us enjoying some privileges, um, though they did not, I mean, we could have, um, I'm just 23 years of age, I could not have found Museven in office. Exactly. And our history of Amini um, and those Obotes I hear about. So our generation, it's our time. Let's take the mantle. We ensure that our kids, our grandsons and daughters live a life way better than ours. Opposition, we need to unite. Museven is a human being, he's not immortal. This world has seen the Napoleons, the Adolf Hitlers, their time came and went. The only permanent thing in life is change. So Museveni's time is coming. I mean, we, I might be even speaking right now and the man is already dead. Let me just uh, go a little bit. I'm going to come back with you guys before we shut down the show. Uh, during the week, actually today, 12 hours back, we, we put a question out there. Uh, many of our viewers, you know that President of Uganda had a trek today uh, remembering um, the forces or the people he fought with uh, to liberate the country. And we put a question, what do you make of Museveni's 100-kilometer trek in remembrance of the war heroes? Now, there's some answers that came in that we promised you had to, to read at least. 
Now, one of the uh, people who responded, Ricardo May, said, apart from him trekking through poverty, stricken areas and areas where trees have been cut massively because of his fear that those against his government would hide there, what's new he's going to tell those living there? Now, that's a question. This is just a show of, a show off to the poor war veterans in those areas. Now, I'm going to read one more, uh, one or two more comments, and then I'll bring back the matter to you guys, what you make of what the president did. Now, one, Ronald Rucham says, 30 years of those people in that area were forgotten. No good roads, no good hospitals, no good schools. Poverty is the order of the day until when the true opposition came into existence. Now they have remembered them. All right, so we, we, we one more comment uh, that comes from Karen Elizabeth. She says, he just wants to rejuvenate his decaying body. Aunt Kampala, okay, Aunt Kampala, Kuya, Bova, Lova, Vana, Valeta, whatever. Uh, let's, let, let me read one more. Politics aside, Johnny Mutiaba says it seems to be working for him. Now, I want to come to you guys. You've had mm. different comments. Of course, already some of them have you know, skipped some words. Uh, but each one of you is going to give me your opinion about the new strategy that President Museven is using in the country. Before we, we, we have uh, just seven minutes to go. He's uh, not, that's not his strategy. new strategy that he's using. One, he started with the walk against corruption. Now he's remembering the would be people against his government, you see, the veterans. You see what, 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 is, is, what is annoying me? What is annoying me? For the time, for the 34 plus years Museven has been in power, I think his ability to use common sense is diminishing at a fast rate. And I do not know who is organizing these functions. Because whoever is organizing, the last one, the old corruption was organized by Balam. He's a businessman. He made his money. Because Museveni, at this rate, if he had real advisors who love him at least, who really want to say better, gonna, or even who, who want to give him a chance when it comes, because Museveni is leading the largest population of Ugandans understand. At least they have a, a clear view of, of the politics of Uganda. Museveni should not be working against corruption. Museveni should not be working in areas where families lost their loved ones. Right. Families were left with no one. Museveni has had a chance for the last 34 years to compensate those war, those war heroes. He has had a chance because some of these people, he ate their food, he used their animals, he killed their own people. In fact, Museveni killed, you see, what people may, need to understand, when there is a, the, when there is a war, what was happening in uh, 19, uh, 1985, 1986, 1981, Museveni was coming on to power. So who is more likely to kill more. Who is the rebel? Who is the rebel? Museveni was the rebel leader. Exactly. The rebel will kill more because he wants the seat. Exactly. So Museveni killed these people. In terms of if you are going to use simple common sense, Museveni killed majority of Ugandans in Wero. Right. And for the last, and you've seen every every January 26th, the liberation, you know, whatever they have, the liberation, whatever day, Museveni, Museveni has failed. If he was going to compensate these people, by the time we, we are 34 years, every Ugandan in that part of the area who lost a loved one, or whose food, or whatever, was 78, he would have physically compensated them, they would be happy. Because for him to go and walk and exercise, you know, and, 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 and you know, exercise his old bones that are wearing out, does not help people. It does not oh, sorry, put food you. on the thank table. Friend, take, I want to bring in Richard. Uh, I, I was in Bidembo. That was the turning point of the war. I was in, I, I, one day I will write my book about the history and our struggles. I'll tell you one day, but let me tell you. In 99, I was able to hear seven speech going through that journey from, uh, f from the forest Garamba to Birembo. It has been happening. I mean, 20 years ago, it happened. But what he was saying, that economics and the road, they change the whole country. Has been seven for the last 20 years. I had his speech. If I could remember everything he was, he was, he was saying, has he achieved everything that he was talking about? Or oh, 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 it's just a monkey of the country? Has the people of Uganda come out of poverty? He was speaking on the New Year's Eve that what we need is more investors in Uganda to come in. 
People power what is going to do is going to turn about. But investors the come in with their workers. They come in with the tea girls. They come in with the tea girls. The laborers. What did the trek mean to you, Richard? What did the trek mean to you? The people who were there in 1999. How many people were there this time? Yeah. How many people were there this time? Right. Because yeah. I was looking at yeah. them since morning yeah. Yeah. and say exactly yeah. who was there and who was not there. Yeah. 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 Between yeah. the revolution yeah. was a yeah. lie, yeah. it was yeah. a mere lie. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, in 1999, Museven made that trek too, <laughs> and these people didn't benefit. In 2020, Museven is making that trek again. Museven is fearing the youths. Museven is fearing what is expected in 2021, because the youths are going are gonna to come turn up in big numbers because they have a reason to vote. They are voting someone of their age and they are voting someone they are sure of because this is a perfect time when Ugandans are tired. Now, Museveni walking for almost 100 kilometers. Yeah. Right. Recently, I heard Museveni is, is, is being put on exercise to, to chop some weight <laughs> from 100 kilograms to now 70, 70 kilograms. If, if not, and he was if, bragging about if, it. If not Robert Chagulani's stress. So I think Mr. Museveni is exercising himself, but this is a mockery. Because all the people that Museveni is, is working with, they are broken people. Every, every, they, they don't have even good shelter. Come. But a an, an majority of them he's working with are not from Luero. He exactly. went with them from Kampala. They're exactly. living comfortable. Right, so exactly. I'm going I'm to bring in Ibrahim so after. These, yeah, people, these people are doing bad. These people are desperate. These people that Museveni is working with, the real, the real people that are on ground, they are doing so bad. They don't even have best, best, best needs for themselves. Right. So Museven is working. The, the trek is doing right now is a mockery to Uganda, and whoever is giving him the strategies is failing him. All right, uh, Imran. Yes. Um, what does that tell you? The president is doing his job by remembering all uh, his these war heroes who did a great job in liberating the country. The peace and the security that you guys today who are now standing against the same man who fought for your freedom. I'm um, enjoying. I, I may not justify Museveni is going to the bush um, in 1980 and 1981 up to 19, um, 1986. Um, but he went to the bush. Um, the country had had very ugly um, history um, with Obote 1, Obote 2. I mean, um, just um, exchanging power just like that. Um, but when Museveni um, won um, um, the, the war, I'll say... Um, in 1986, um, I, I was not there. But I want to compare the job um, Museveni and his colleagues um, um, they were with in the bush after coming to the power. I want to compare the job and tasks they, the, and tasks they had to, um, to the job, the likes of um, George Washington, um, Benjamin Franklin, those that forefounded America had. Um, they also came in. Um, Washington and his colleagues, they got to power, they fought um, the British, they are now in office. So they knew, okay, yes, of course we are going to sh share power amongst ourselves. Washington was the first president, he left, um, Adam came in, he left, and then Jeffers, um, Jefferson came in, they left. But much as those um, people shared power amongst themselves, they were able to come up with a document that can stand the test of the time, even up to, to date, nearly 200 years ago. Um, that document, which, which of course the, the United States Constitution. To, to the 1995 um, yeah, I, I, I actually want to get there. Right. Um, the United States Constitution can still stand the test of the time 200 years ago. But Museveni and his colleagues get in office in um, 1986, and they were only able to come up with a document for our country after 10 years in, 19, in 1996. Right. That's when they come up with our constitution. You've had 10 years to come up with a document that is going to impact the social, the economical, yeah. the health, um, well-being of the people. And you come up with such a document. OK, it had its issues. But yes, Museveni, at this point, we are looking at you as the founding father. You ask for. Um, you're like, okay, let me test drive this document. So he ran for president in 1996 in and then 2001. And if Museveni left office in 2005 and he did not run in 2006, right now um, he could be the founding father of Uganda, literally. We could forget about the Obotes and the Mutesas. So 
when I see him just mocking the fight um, and the war he had in the 1980s, because when you start moving around, walking around, you're just mocking that war. Museveni just had to leave office in 2005. He could be the founding father of our country. So he's just wasting um, our taxpayers' money because whenever the president is going somewhere, the security detail um, is beefed up. People are paid to do this and that. So is, I People mean, are paid to go there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, so before, so before, you, finish, before you finish up, just give me. I want. I want. To, just give me one second. One if second. I, one second. And uh, this is my submission, and I'm picking it from what he said. Our parents. What, one second. Yeah, one we'll second. Go, we'll go to Chaka Chaka's yeah, yes. event, and then we'll be done. One second. Show. All right. Mm -hmm. Our parents failed us, and I'm picking it from what he said. In 2000 and, uh, 2006, our parents still were talking about Otucheba Kotulo. At least you can get some sleep. Our parents... For after the 10 years of President Museveni having no document, having no constitution, if they had allowed him maybe to, to take another one term and now started demanding for change without, you know, believing in all with Tuchema Kotulo, we wouldn't be where we are right now. But Ugandans then, those are our parents, failed us because they were there throughout that time of Museveni. They ran in the bush, weren't there. They failed us. Now it is up to us. This generation right now, if we don't do anything, Right now, we are going to fail our children. And we, know, we are not going to have any guts to sit and tell our children how things are bad. We are not going to explain to them anything. Because our, our parents have what we do not have. We have social media. We are elite. We are more informed. We, we cannot be deceived. I remember when I was growing, when I was young, we, told, we were told, oh, Ms. Seven needs to turn into a cat. Those are things we were told when we were young. Yes. And now we, we came to believe those were all lies. But our parents believed them. Our parents believed so many things. And now this generation, this generation right now, if you do not do something, you have nothing to tell your children. All right, so, so I want to go, but I want to finish up with this, uh, and I want you guys to give me a final take. It's, it's going to be like an open discussion uh, towards the end of the year, actually the end of the year, uh, the yes, last year, we, we organized with Yogi's Eve or New Year's Eve. Uh, there were foreign musicians or international icons who had come to Uganda to perform, and... What we learned was one of them, of course, we had one from, one would say, in that in part, Kandaman something? Kandaman. And then, and then from the up, one again would put it from the opposition, that was Chaka Chaka. What we remember was Chaka Chaka was reported. Now, two stories developed on the same day. Chaka Chaka said there was nothing like a deportation. That's a fact, based on what she said. There are certain things that she misunderstood with maybe the organizers of the event. She, she misunderstood. Right. It doesn't right. mean there was no right. deportation. Let's, let's, let's put it this way. That's a, that's a fact. That's what, that's what she said. She's a person who was there. And, and the police comes up to say, we deported her because she never had the right visa to come and perform in the country. Now, the, the country was left in the balance over who is right. Let me open up the discussion to you guys. Let me, let me tell you one thing. Sorry, let, me, let, let, let me tell you one thing. Richard if you listen, right. very, go back and listen to the statement of Chaka Chaka. She said she did not know what was happening. And she did not understand what was going on. So for her, just because she was in a state of confusion, of not understanding what was happening, she did not know it was a deportation. But uh, um, I will say one thing. Museveni sometimes gets scared over things I would not even expect anyone to get scared of. I do not know, because uh, as much as we do want to incline it to anything political, for me to see pictures of Kana Bongoman meeting Museveni, yet they are performing on the same day, and Museveni giving Kana Bongoman 10 counts, um, it's enough to make me feel like this is a political thing. And uh, definitely, Kana Bongoman and Chaka Chaka performing on their side, when you look at these two performers, Chaka Chaka would pull a bigger crowd. And, uh, and again, it goes back also Balam. Balam is, is a very dubious, he's, no, he's, a, he's a businessman who does not operate in, on a straight line. You know, he's uh, someone who will do anything to pull off anything. Because I wondered how Kana Bongman, all of a sudden who had just come into the country, ended up at, in the presence of President Seven. I would understand President Seven right now wants to meet anyone for publicity, to just to Sarah take a picture. Randy. And then, and those are, those are useless people, you know, I don't want even to discuss them. And uh, maybe, this is from my own take, but from the people I've had a chance to interact with people who are there, the journalists who are there, she was truly totally deported because uh, the place where she was staying in part of Africa was highly guarded. 
CFC and military was there. For someone who willingly left and went back, why was there heavy military, you know, deployment, deployment right, in those right, areas? So, so and again, when I look at her, she's, she has endorsed Bobby White. You remember when she was at Serena, that one she, you know, she called the whole country unaware. She was at Serena, Bobby Wayne was there. And the endorsement and all the hugging and all, you know, this is the new Mandela. This was too much. But again, I think Museveni was scared coming from the fact that when you look at people who use their music to cause the revolution and change in South Africa, it was Chaka Chaka. Chaka Chaka, Chaka and Mandela, uh, their music so did a lot uh, in bringing uh, change yeah, in yeah, South Africa. Look, and, uh, Dave, Dave if, yeah. if, if, if you look at, if you look at um, the trend, of, uh, of Uganda right now. Mr. Museveni has made Uganda a criminal state because everywhere they have published, CNN published, uh, BBC published about the deportation of, of this lady. And uh, this is when uh, we've said that whoever, whoever, whoever thinks from Seven right now, because I'm not... Uh, I'm, they I, really hate him. I know very well that Museveni is, is, is not in operation of some of the things. Whoever is thinking for, and strategizing for Mr. Museveni right now is, is putting him in a pit. Because this woman is one of the influential women in the world. This woman is among the 100 most influential women in the world. This woman was very key in, this, in the liberation of, of, of South, South Africa, Africa with, with Lakadube. And the name Princess of Africa, the Princess of Africa, she got it from Uganda. So this was a big, big, big shame to the country that... that named her the princess of africa uganda is is a country that you can get the visa at the entry it's not in uganda you don't get visa before you enter the country so everywhere if you advertise an artist like here in the u.s that's why most of them in 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 the in the need to avoid taxes they will just tweet they will just share in groups that this person is coming to perform at this particular event but the moment they see a post of that individual, they might stop them or issue them a work permit to come and operate here so that they pay tax. So in Uganda, we don't have a system because this person was, was advertised for almost two months. And the, the government and immigration knew that she was coming. And they let her in. And they, they let her in on, 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 a tour, on a tourist visa. Well, if she came as a tourist, why didn't they allow, allow her had, had time. They would block her not to go to the event, but give her time to go somewhere else. If in case she went to Chobe Park and, and bring in the income to the government. But due to the fact that Museveni has that Bobby Wine phobia, Museveni has the fear in him. But, but the country, that, countries also have policies and, and laws that govern the movement yeah. of um, foreigners for, you know, in and out. But it's not the first time she has but been in Uganda. She has been in Uganda. She, this, this, this visa, she might be using the same visa. And she had she come had to perform to for the Karaka. Okay, so even the first time. I'm running out of time. So Mr. Okay, Seven, okay. just, just a second. Right. Mr. Seven, uh, Mr. Seven discredited the Kabaka of Uganda by, exactly. by deporting uh, her visitor. Chaka Chaka. The visitor. Chaka Chaka was the visitor of the kingdom. Exactly. Chaka Chaka was the visitor to, to the Kabaka because this is the annual festival that the king uh, organizes every year. So it was a disgrace. It's, it's, it was really disrespectful. And internationally, even the people in South Africa, Ugandans in South Africa, no, we, we are worried. Because these people in South Africa, because we are worried political. that if, if, yes. if Chaka Chaka makes Chaka a statement that I'm, I'm being deported from Uganda, they, would, they, could, they could cause mayhem in, against Ugandans in South Africa. All right, so guys, I want to so <laughs> bring in uh, Imran. Yes, yes Yvonne, Yvonne Chaka Chaka came in, and um, he was, she was given terms and conditions, actually. Um, she was told, um, if you're going to perform, you're not going to mention um, Bobby Wine's name. And then two, you're not going to sing any song of yours that involves freedom. And, Which is impossible. And of course, somebody of high integrity is like, come on, you're not going to tell me to call um, a spoon a big spade. So she's like, I'm not going to abide by those conditions. Then she was given more options. We are either deporting you or you do voluntary departure. And then she, um, she decided to do voluntary departure. That's why when she got um, to South Africa, she was like, I was not deported. It was voluntary departure. But of course, she was given two options. We are either deporting you or you do voluntary departure. All right. Was it legal? Yes. Any country has, any immigration has the right to let you in or... Um, 
stop you to get into its country. Right. But she was already in the country. Well, where were, were they when she went to immigration? I, I mean, but they, they have a right people, to come and pick you out. No, from no, they, you people, okay, who, so people who are stopped from people, they, people who are stopped from coming to the U.S. Yes. They are not allowed to enter from right. the immigration yeah. point. Yeah, from the okay. you're, you're yes. taken back to, to the, to the, to the no, next. No, 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 I think someone someone briefed the president. If you allow her to perform, she's going to talk about Bobby Wine and she's going to sing songs of freedom, of which what has made Chaka Chaka popular is her songs of freedom. It is like you're turning her on to okay. sing. All right, all right guys. Now, uh, let, let, let's yeah. go. Let, 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 let's me, uh, uh, join it together. Then I, I summarize it there. Let me tell you, Museveni has realized that his revolution has failed because of one man, Bobby White. If you see, for me, I've been following Museveni for so many years and everything he has been doing. This last trek he has been doing from Bire, from from, from, from Kabamba to... No, 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 Kabamba. the one that has been doing so, yeah. to, to, to Bilembo. You know what the, uh, uh, Cuba did, the Cuban Revolution? The, uh, Fidel Castro. It was this, it was the, the Sierra Mountain. The, 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 from, the, from Sebastian. Yeah, y y yes, it's the same track. He went uh, recently, he, he, last year or two, he was in Mozambique, where he went, where, with the Ferrimo, where he trained. Now, on the last thing that Oh, the last time he says his revolution is going to succeed in, in turning things around the way he always thought, this young man comes out on a So, So I want to ask you again <laughs> with the Chaka Chaka saga, y where do you see why? Yes. Now, if someone comes in to support someone who has failed his revolution, I think what Museveni has to do, the, the track is doing now, would have gone to Cuba and kneel down before the, the grave of this famous Cuban dictator, Fidel Castro, said, look, this young man, Honorable Bochanguan, has failed by revolution. How do you, did you succeed in tying down the country? Because for the last 30 years, what Museveni has been doing good for the country is tying it down for the future and generation in a coming through like Cuba. So, and what? this woman comes to support someone that has made him fail. That's the whole thing about Chaka Chaka. There's All nothing right, more there. But, but the question I want to ask, yeah. and, 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 I've, and I've, I, Imran, I, I threw it to him when he was saying, I'm really disappointed in Buganda and the Kabaka. No. Because, uh, in, let, me, let, me, let me say this. I'm really disappointed in Buganda and the Kabaka. This was a visitor to the kingdom. When I look at the documents that were submitted at the embassy, at the embassy, at the, um, at the ambassador, because this, you do not just invite... Uh, you know, chaka right. chaka. So the document that was submitted at the South African Embassy for for having chaka chaka come to Uganda, she was coming as a visitor of the Kabaka, performing for the Kabaka getting into into the New Year. And in fact, if she was around, she would have <coughs> ushered the Kabaka into the New Year. But uh, you see, the Kabaka, as much as you're saying, is not political. We've seen Kabaka of Uganda and its subjects and the people who work for the Kabaka making political statements or that's being involved or picking envelopes or himself. picking because if the Katiki of Uganda picks an envelope from a seven, it is the Kabaka, you know, he's representing the Kabaka. Why doesn't the Kabaka say no, take right, it back? I, I so what I'm going to say, so what I'm going to say, I was I'm so disappointed and you see the 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 fact that these leaders continue to keep quiet. The likes of the Kabaka, the likes of uh, no, no, religious no, no, leaders, no, 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 no. they Kabaka are going to have the trust because uh, he may not be they political, but his subjects are political. No, 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 the kingdom the was you. political. The kingdom right. had to make the political was political. The kingdom, no, Uganda no. is failing Uganda. No. No. And there would be no Uganda without Ugandans. Yes. There, guys. Uganda, there would be no Uganda. There would be no Uganda. There would be no Uganda. I might be an Arab and I believe in Kabaka. No, no, but no, no, Uganda, Uganda is not political. But the premier of Uganda kingdom was supposed to be Uganda. Uganda is not political. Okay, what happened? Except for Chaka Chaka. This was Chaka Chaka coming to perform. Chakachaka was reported for so, political reasons. What was she going to do? So the kingdom stayed aside. Let me, let me, let me say when she they was reported on political grounds. People can play her music at a time. People can play her music at a time. Guys, 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 gu
you know, 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 and that visitor is maybe taking a word, a vat to do anything. And to expect it to give a report, is to especially like the exactly. case of Uganda, wasn't the, the Uganda kingdom where she was supposed to perform, Make supposed to come out you and see, give a statement exactly. to, the, to the Ugandans. The grounds matter. The grounds matter. One, Kabaka is not political. Um, and she, apparently, she, let me, apparently... Let me, let me put it this way. Yes. Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. I'm going to she, answer your question. She did not say she came to Uganda for political reasons. Exactly. She came to Uganda to perform. For the Kabaka. But she was, supposed she to was deported on political reasons. Um, apparently, what did the apparently, say? the kingdoms that coexist with the presence of politics, like um, the, big, the biggest kingdom in the world, the UK um, kingdom, the queen... They never involve in any politics. But the queen has and the queen has the queen absolute power over the prime minister. Exactly. The queen has absolute power over the prime minister. I'm going to give, give, give you guys an opportunity. I just want to finish up. The, 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 queen, so, the queen doesn't care who becomes prime minister of UK. The majority choose your prime minister and whoever has, whoever has the majority of votes in parliament, your party, you'll get as but, the but prime I, minister I, and I'll uh, endorse this, him uh, as prime uh, minister. Come to this, so, Kabaka. The kingdom, the kingdom, so, in my so, opinion, in my opinion, the kingdom was probably supposed to come up to say, so, "Well, our visitor was supposed with, to, go to come and with, perform, so, but due to certain exactly. circumstances, you see, you see, you see, you see, they present that with the grounds, with the grounds that were given to Chaka Chaka, you're not going to do any politics at this stage." And Chaka Chaka was like, "No," which is okay because she's a lady of integrity. The kingdom stopped from there because Kabaka, the you come up and make, and you're like, "Chaka Chaka was coming, um, she was stopped." Um, NRM. And I believe in you, Kabaka. Leave politics to us, Kabaka. Okay. Now, let, let, right, let, so let, so let me... Let me I'm, 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 go, yeah, I'm going to ask you one thing, because th that's why I'm here. I was there in the Constitutional Assembly when Museveni buried the Kabaka from... We, the Baganda people, never... Even your mother did it. Ne next next me, week, me, I, me, I want you, you, you to give me fine. some time me, Richard, and I'll Richard, explain quick to question, you. Quick question, we quick as question. Baganda have never consented Museven to take the Kabaka out of politics. Let me, we let have me, never. Let me, let me, let me ask you this. We shall no, never. No, I'm going to give you an answer. Because that's our answer. I'm going to give you an answer. I'm going to give you an answer. I'm going to give you an answer. Yes. I'm going to give you an answer. Who tells Baganda that right Uganda belongs to them? I'm not responding to what happened. No. Your, your final take. Mm -hmm. Did the kingdom mm -hmm. do the right thing by not responding to what yes. happened to Chaka Chaka? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Don't ask. Let me, let me, let me say this. For the Kabaka to steal and his institution to insinuate is not political. Yet his subjects, as a political, at the same time culture, the Kabaka is making a fool, the entire institution of the kingdom is making a fool of themselves. Because what they are doing right now, because for you to say I'm you not see, political, and, and you, the same subjects who are political, you want them to be cultural, then you're making a fool of yourself. Again, the things we are talking about, if human rights see, are abused, we've never seen see, the kingdom is always quiet. David. But the same subjects are the ones being abused. So, does the Kabaka, is he waiting for all the Baganda to be wiped out yes. for him David. to do something? Oh, Who is he going to do? David, David. 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 No, 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 Just, just, just allow me to say something. Let me submit. Just a second. Dave, let me submit this. Take. The government of Mr. Museven doesn't respect the Uganda Kingdom. Exactly. That's the first thing that we have. Because it cannot exist with the Uganda being the lead of the country. That's the first thing that we want to acknowledge. Yes. Mr. Museven and his government doesn't respect the Uganda Kingdom. But it was so absolute, king. it was so absolute for the kingdom through the premier to come out and make an official statement. Because the people who paid their money to go and watch Chaka Chaka. <coughs> were they refunded the money? Weren't refunded. And they, they, they had to be explained furthermore about what transpired and what failed 
the, 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 the lady from going to sing for them because they had to see value for their money. But if you see right now that things are happening in, in Uganda right now, that Katikiro is guarded more than the king. Is Why? It? Because, because it's NRM. He's, because he's, he's, and he's been making political statements. David, 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 I'll just make one David, point. David, I'll just make one point. I want him to this, finish up. This thing, I'll give you one this thing, if, there is, if there is human rights abuse, we don't care if you're the king. On, Please come and condemn. You see, allow, yes, allow me to correct. Anything just happens, a if, if anything future. goes the wrong way, come out and stand your ground. Because it's your subject. You see, because these are your subjects. All right. You Thank see, you, buddy. You see, yeah, on, the same yeah, note, on the same note, we cannot have, um, apparently, right now, we cannot have time to discuss that topic. But the biggest problem of Uganda was at its birth. The moment the English got Uganda and gave it to a kingdom, in making Mutesa Sekabaka the president, that's where our problems as Uganda began from. So you were giving so a little I this I absolutely disagree with the involvement of politics and the kingdom. But because but that's our problem is, as the Uganda. They are involved. The fact is Chaka Chaka did not come to Uganda for political reasons. She came to Uganda exactly. to perform. When and she got in Uganda, that, when but she, she got did not in even Uganda, even her songs, even her songs, songs 80%, 80 give me, they are freedom give me, songs. Give me, no. Give me, no, 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 <laughs> give me my time. Uh, Chaka Chaka came to Uganda to perform as a musician. Yes. Not for political reasons. And the government of Uganda, under President Museven and the entire team, suggested to think that she came for political reasons. As Imran, you've said that she was reported on allegations that she was involving herself in political matters. Does that verify the reason why the Uganda Kingdom, under the leadership of Prophet yes. Kabaka and the Premier, yes, because Maiga, failed to give they did not fail. to Ugandans they did who, not. Paid, who paid or the money, the money, yes. money um, to go and watch the musicians? The Kingdom did not fail to make a statement. There is somebody who is in our room who believes and thinks it was just fed for the government to stop um, Chaka Chaka. So, and that somebody who's in RM subscribes to the same kingdom. So, when things turn to become political, the kingdom tries as much as possible to abstain from them. No, last, but question, last, the question, last question before I leave you, Imran. If, if you're being realistic to the Ugandans who paid all their monies to go and watch the musician, none of those went there for political reasons. They went there to celebrate with the king. With the king. Over These are subjects of the king. Yeah. Doesn't that make the Ghana kingdom responsible to come out clearly and explain to Ugandans the reason why they did not talk to them after what happened? Because they are still demanding for the musician, not for political reasons, but for social life. As Ugandans, as Ghana people, as Banyankole, uh, as whoever supports the Ghana kingdom. I want to leave that to you and, and the viewers who I agree with you. Sarah, uh, you say, no, 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 hmm. Sarah, it's not a mandate. It's not, uh, it's not a, a command that the Ghana kingdom has to come out and apologize to Ugandans. They have a right not to because what happened, they paid probably, maybe they paid for, for her mm -hmm. to come and perform. She also has to come out and give a reason why after making the payments, she did not come and perform. She okay. did. Now, she has to explain to the Ghana kingdom. No, but uh, you, that, say, that you, you, say, you see the hypocrisy in the Buganda Kingdom institution. And uh, you, see, uh, you see the problem they're facing right now, of which they're not realizing. When you, they, they, the culture of Buganda and the institution has been so diluted that if I ask any of you seated here, if you're Buganda, if you know, also Kuntambulia Mungo Buganda, none of you could can. That's how it has been diluted. And the fact that they are continuing to stay away from the issues that are hurting Ugandans, they are going to get to because a stage they where they are going to get to they are going to get to a stage where the Kabaka has no subjects. Right. Because the right. respect no, no, to no, the no, Kabaka no, no, let, no, me, no, let me let me finish up. No, the respect to the Kabaka of Uganda. Let me finish up. The the respect to the Kabaka of Uganda is dying. Why is he shining political? Let me give you one. Let me finish up. Let me finish up. Let me finish up. I will give the 
respect, the respect, the respect, the respect, the respect, especially when it comes to this generation, to the Kabaka of Uganda is Sorry. diminishing. Because what is happening, the Kabaka of Uganda, the people, the young people of this generation, of which they are subjects of the Kabaka, of which subscribe to the political and cultural and first the uh, social economic problems of Uganda, the Kabaka is quiet. But you've seen the Katiki of Uganda making political statements. And for, for them to keep quiet when it comes to this, and what is annoying me, every time you have issues or you have the, the central government abuse human rights, the kingdom of, of Uganda is quiet. But the people they are abusing, these are Uganda. These are their families. That's not true. Okay. 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 The Prime no, Minister, my Your final take? The issue of Uganda, as you said, is constitutional. Because I was there in the Constitutional Assembly. I'll give you the story one time. Clearly. I'm going to give you an example. United Arab Emirates has kingdom and is under federation. It is a constitution that is made by the people the way they want. I'm going to give you another country. Botswana. Very many Bo Botswana countries. Botswana has kingdoms. Yes. But, and it, it's, it got Japan. independence on, almost in the same time as, as Buganda, 1962 or 1964 True. and 1966. It has been peaceful because of the constitution that was made to benefit the Ugandan. Museveni came out directly to, to hope prohibit the kingdom of Uganda and the Kabaka of Uganda to interfere into the politics because he wanted to destroy Uganda so that he can rule and his movement forever of the country. All right, thank you. Uh, we don't agree thank, with that. Thank you. Uh, Imran, you're going to take, then Badra will give you also the opportunity uh, and then we'll be out. I may not have a chance to react on each and everything. Right. Um, was the Constitutional Assembly right to um, stop kingdoms from evolving in politics? Yes. Um, they no, were absolutely it was not right. Good. You see, if a, a, a free state, like um, I'll give an example of the United States, they are clear. Um, religion and politics, no, don't bring church in our politics. But we see so, the evangelicals. Uh, of course, in that's, the of course they, they'll tend to influence. But um, religion, um, kingdoms, they, don't, they should not influence politics because politics tends to be. A lot, there is a lot of tension in politics. So when it, things get political, religion, if you're um, a bishop, you're a reverend, abstain. Sorry. Unless when right. there is a human rights crisis. But who should I vote? Yeah, Dev, in, in, in politics. Yeah, Dev, thank you so much. Uh, right now, what we are seeing in Uganda, Mr. Museveni has, has brought kingdoms and these kingdoms that have been there for long, he has again brought chiefdoms. Mr. Museveni, right now, the, the Basoga have a king who has been there because we knew only three kings in, in, in Uganda. We had the Buganda king, we had the Busoga king, and we had the Bunyoro king. And Ankole. Uh, what about? That, that, exactly. That, How about exactly. Toro? But, and Toro. And Toro. But Mr. Museveni has but brought yeah, chiefdoms. He has divided. This, the, in Soroti, they have a king. In a, there is a chiefdom in Soroti. There is a chiefdom in Imbale. There is a chiefdom in Karamoja. There is, there is a chiefdom in Gulu. So these are all tactics of Mr. Museveni to dilute everything, to dilute culture. That's true, but... Mr. Museveni doesn't respect any kingdom because he feels he gives them money. But when it comes to human rights abuses, they shouldn't shun out. Because initially, yes. politics and the, human rights move together. The initially, the, the, at, the, at the start of, of Uganda as a country, the king was the president. That was the biggest mistake the but, British did but to right Uganda. Now, you cannot tell me that the, the kingdoms should shun away from politics, yet these are subjects who are victims. Exactly. Like, like the, 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 the revelants, the pastors, and, and all those bishops. They should speak about these things transpiring. The but pastors. they're getting free cars and then they're Right now they are getting, they are all driving right, expensive right, cars <laughs> so, and they're exploiting I, people. I want, I want to thank you guys for, for, for all your submissions. I, I'm sure that a public could judge whether it was right for, for the kingdom of Uganda not to address the public. They should the refund the money. They should uh, refund the money of the subject. The, the so it's, I'm going to leave that to the public. And I think it's going to be an open discussion for even people who are watching us uh, back at home. They, they're going to, to really think so much critical about it, whether it was right for the president, uh, for, for, for the Uganda kingdom, not to address the public over the issue of Chaka Chaka. After today, they're now almost 
three days of, that have already passed. Five. Or five, five days. Five. Actually, three days, probably. We haven't had anything. So we want to thank you, our viewers, and uh, who, have been, who have already supported our programs here on Comfort Television. As we promised, this year we're coming up with six more shows. So you're gonna, it's going to be a busy year, not just politically, but also in our social lives. We may have entertainment and other things. So I want to thank you so much for always watching Uganda at Crossroads. It's always tough as it is. People have different opinions. They sometimes agree and disagree. That's what politics is all about, and we have to accommodate each and every individual. So we want to thank you so much. Uh, guys, I want to thank you for, for always giving me your time and, and uh, the opportunity to, to come and, and we discuss together. And, and, and I hope to, to see you again next Saturday, same time, to break down the key issues. So normally in this show, I, no, I don't normally give you the opportunity to, to give your closing remarks. It's, it's a unique show, so, <laughs> so I want to thank you again. Uh, but for you, all of yours, it's 2020. You promised yourself towards the end of the year that you are going to do might and miracle things this year. But you should remember that politics drives a lot of things in your country, Uganda, or even those who are watching us from other parts of the world. Think about this year. Work so hard. Again, poor people are always given what to do. Rich people participate. Have a great week. See you next Saturday.